When looking at what GetUp isn't, a useful place to return is to the earlier comments of Erica Betts, a coalition senator from Tasmania. In a recent speech, he made the suggestion that perhaps GetUp was an astroturf movement. Uh, what he means by this is that perhaps there are no real people uh, behind GetUp. Uh, it's manufactured, perhaps, by a small team uh, or maybe with just a small number of citizens behind it. Senator Abetz, in the same speech, also asked the AEC to investigate GetUp once again to see whether we can be classed as an associated entity uh, of Labor and the Greens. Labor and the Greens uh, was the claim that he somehow made. And the next day, talkback shock jock uh, Alan Jones said we were too closely aligned with the independents. So Labor, Greens and the independents. Uh, at the same time as this, uh, there is a senior minister in the Gillard government whose frustrations with GetUp constantly keeping the ALP and the government accountable have led him to place personally uh, place angry calls back to get up members who ring him uh, to try and ring his office to try and encourage uh, greater advancements in climate change policy or investments in mental health care the likes of which the coalition have recently been committing themselves to and I think many of these animosities are rooted within the mistaken belief that somehow get ups online movement is apolitical that somehow there is this view that GetUp is saying we're apolitical. As Senator Abetz said in his recent critique of online politics and the GetUp movement, and I quote, might I say from the outset that GetUp's activities would be perfectly legitimate if they just came out and admitted to being a left-wing activist group. And while we think there are important distinguish distinctions between progressive politics and left-wing politics, Senator Abetz, you heard it here first, it's true. We are not apolitical. We do stand for something. And as a movement, both online and on the ground, we aggressively pursue our agenda. All of these things are true. As you've probably seen on some occasions, our approach uh, does create enemies. Uh, indeed, I guess you probably can see that contrarian number one in my mind uh, has been Senator Betts, who has the unique honour of writing uh, a piece of legislation that ironically has been declared unconstitutional on two occasions. Uh, and yes, it's true, we did play a big part in bringing down his legislation. Uh, the example, of course, being the High Court challenge, uh, which overturned, we thought, unconstitutional laws that disenfranchised literally hundreds of thousands of people from participating in our election, people who were and are disproportionately young, indigenous, uh, migrant and families who rent. Now, why did we decide it was OK to disappoint not only a sitting senator, but a lot of politicians uh, and go through a public campaign and eventually go to the High Court? One of the values that we stand for that was the reason for this uh, is participation. We believe that broad public participation, both in our elections and in our democracy, uh, combined with declining corporate influence, if we can get there, will lead to progressive outcomes. And I think this is a really important statement uh, because our belief in strengthening democracy stems from our related belief that progressive outcomes will come from a political system uh, that better reflects the opinions of all Australians, including the one million proportionate, the one, the one million Australians uh, who didn't vote, who weren't enrolled to vote at the last election. What do we believe in? What does our online movement stand for? We believe in the values of equality, care and compassion, sustainability and accountability. The things we stand for are these widely held views. And they're in fact so important uh, and so prevalent, uh, I think, because of what the internet allows us to achieve. It is, of course, the internet that sparks uh, mass public participation in democracies, the tool that we've been able to use. We believe that the majority opinion is a progressive opinion and that the way to demonstrate this power, the way to demonstrate this opinion is by using the internet to unlock mass participation in politics. But we are quite different as an online movement uh, in almost every way uh, to other NGOs uh, and to think tanks and to political parties. In fact, our complete reliance on social media, in which category, in this case, I'm including viral emails of the nature we send, 
uh, makes us a grassroots movement axiomatically. It's obvious, therefore, that there is no astroturfing going on, uh, because that, of course, would be against the fundamental principles behind the use of social media. In fact, I think it makes us more accountable in many ways uh, than all political parties in this country. I think it makes us accountable in many ways than all NGOs and all think tanks in this country. All of these groups rely upon and, of course, are accountable to their members in some way. Uh, political parties have to come back to the public every few years to get a mandate. Uh, but their internal party structures, at least in the major parties, see most members having very little actual power. Think tanks are, of course, accountable, you would assume, in some way uh, to those who write the cheques to keep them going. Uh, and NGOs are in some way accountable to those donors, in particular those membership fees uh, that get paid to keep them going. But it's no exaggeration, I believe, uh, to suggest that GetUp's power does come from its members, all of which, all of which begins online. Oxfam or Greenpeace can, of course, uh, run a TV ad uh, from their annual budget, and ultimately it's funded uh, by their members, but through general donations and membership fees. And at GetUp, of course, there are no membership fees, so if we're not in touch with the demands of members, we're, of course, unable uh, to run an ad. GetUp members chip in in their thousands of small donations online, and if they didn't, our ads would literally go nowhere. If GetUp fails to respond to the wishes of our members online, uh, there would be a petition, of course, with no names, uh, with no volunteers, nobody attending events. Uh, there'd be a contact your MP campaign with no MPs actually ever contacted. Uh, and sure, our team of volunteers could make some calls, maybe make a TV ad or start a campaign. But unless it wins the support, and this is the great thing about online politics, unless it wins the support, in fact, not just the support, but the tacit support, uh, not just the tacit support, but in fact the, evo the evoking of action, uh, really our campaigns would go nowhere at all. And this is the great power, I believe, of online politics. Some groups hire lobbyists to go to Parliament House and hassle politicians uh, online through GetUp, but also through so many other movements that are now beginning to use the power of the internet. Uh, thousands of members uh, pick up the phone, having been mobilised online. Uh, in our case, 25,000 members recently spent their time writing heart-wrenching stories uh, and faxing them to politicians about family members and friends who have been affected by the issue of mental health. And if we think about these numbers for just a second, if the average Get Up member spent around 10 minutes working on a fax or a phone call to an MP, uh, then that, in this case, is about 4,100 hours of time. That's about 521 working days, or the equivalent of me spending one and a half years of my full-time working life uh, on an issue. And thanks to the power of the internet, all of this happens within 24 to 48 hours. Uh, I still find it absolutely extraordinary. In the request to speak today, uh, I was asked to respond to this question. Is GetUp a media organisation? Is it a democracy-focused NGO? Or is it a PR firm for certain types of policies? And the reality is, in my opinion, that all of these things are in some way true. But at its heart, it's just people getting together using the internet to get things done, to win campaigns. And yes, those people, of course, believe in things. They believe in things and they're deeply political. The victories we've had, the victories all of us had, have had recently in working online, I think are made possible because of a media uh, that is social rather than asocial. In fact, GetUp's nature is indeed the very same nature behind social media. Like all social media phenomena, GetUp is possible because the web allows people to do things together, to be instantaneously and collaboratively active. So if you want to use a pejorative description, perhaps a better analogy than astroturf would be a viral disease. Uh, or as I prefer to put it, a viral cure for our democracy. The very same things that make GetUp possible, interestingly enough, I think are also having a profound impact on how we as a society are consuming media. Uh, while Twitter is, of course, uh, one of the latest in a series of new technologies that have fueled political debate, 
One of the key elements of the internet is that it has allowed amateurs, essentially amateurs, to do really professional things. And I'm not calling those people who are on Twitter right now uh, amateurs. I'm sure that they will hit me for that. These groups, just like broader people in society, are, I think, increasingly knowledgeable, educated, committed, and networked by new technology. But at its heart, this view lies in what is increasingly becoming, I think, a heated debate about the ethics of information sharing online and the role of sometimes even the competition, in fact, between bloggers and journalists. In many respects, this debate is similar to a less pertinent but importantly still present debate in the NGO sector, uh, a debate between established NGOs with traditional campaigning methods and a newer, more agile, but at the same time, more disruptive uh, group of NGOs. There are those who believe in mainstream media outlets, just like there are those who believe in mainstream NGOs. Uh, but I think we are becoming a vital tool as we move towards 3.0. As GetUp grows increasingly, one of our challenges becomes whether or not we continue to have appetite for risk. Of course, as you grow as an organisation, you inherently have more to lose. I think this is, in wrapping up, one of the great challenges that we will now face. With so much to lose, can this online movement continue to be disruptive? Can it continue to take big risks? Going to the High Court was a $250,000 risk, a big risk for an organisation that would have been put on financial peril had we lost that case, and it was 50-50. So it was a big risk, but one we're very glad to have taken. So in wrapping up, where do we go from here? I think one of the crucial elements of ensuring that we continue to take risk uh, is, is going to be how much we further open up these online tools. Sure, the decisions that GetUp takes to run campaigns are in fact always made with the consultation of our membership. But our view is that it's just not enough yet. That in fact, perhaps in the next year, uh, we need to turn our own model on its head, to hand over the tools to the Australian public, the intellectual property to the Australian public, uh, and to see what others will do with these forms of technology. I understand there's been some very, very funny tweets <laughs> over the last half an hour. That was a real struggle to get through. <laughs> but thank you very much. Cheers. Thank you very much, uh, Simon. And, and gee, GetUp did have a great campaign. Um, and I did like that expression, uh, becoming a vital tool, which I think, um, <laughs> no, no, which I, which I think would be a good name for Bob Catter's autobiography. But, um, 